A huge announcement has just been dropped from Wizards of the Coast, finally revealing the plans for the next official edition of Dungeons & Dragons. With 5e dropping all the way back in 2014, it's been a long old time since the rules have been properly updated outside of supplementary materials like Tasha's Cauldron. But that's all about to change, with a brand new rule set finally being released to the public via early access playtesting and a planned release date finally set for the future. We've trawled through all the information revealed in the one D&D trailer and the press chat that followed to bring you 10 things you need to know about D&D's next edition. Editions are out, it's just one D&D now. Well, first of all, we can stop calling it a new edition of Dungeons & Dragons, because it seems like wizards are doing away with the idea entirely. Now being described as just one D&D, it looks like the plan is to have D&D's newest version and potentially ones to come subsequently to all exist under the single banner of one D&D even to the point where wizards seem to be dogmatically referring to the 5e player's handbook as the 2014 player's handbook. Will it be confusing? Yes. Am I going to hate the new naming system? Yes. Is there anything I can do about it? No, probably not. 5e content will still be playable. The new rule set will be built on the foundations laid by 5th edition. So whilst wizards might not want us to describe it that way, you can essentially think of it as a version 5.5. There's a strong emphasis from the dev team in their trailer that suggests they're happy with the overall state of the game, they just want to make some tweaks and then add loads of new stuff on top. That should mean that average players won't need to learn a brand new way of playing when they eventually move over to the new rule set. And most importantly, as confirmed by Wizards themselves, all the adventures and supplements released since that 2014 player's handbook for 5th edition will be playable with the new rule set. So don't go throwing out all your old books just yet. A new reworked inspiration. Inspiration. Love it, hate it, never use it. It's meant to be awarded for being true to your character and is used at any time to give yourself advantage on a roll. However, it's also a little box on your sheet that a lot of us can end up ignoring. In the new edition of D&D, we're getting more concrete rules on how to use this mechanic, which is meant to encourage us to make it a larger part of every campaign. When you roll a d20, most of us know a 1 means failure and a 20 means a success. Well, whilst this was only technically true of combat rulings in 5e, from now on it's true of all the phases of play. Now, on top of that, any time you roll a 20 in 1 D&D, god that's going to take a while to get used to, you gain a point of inspiration to save or give away. Like 5e, you can still only have one point of inspiration at a time, but now if you gain a new one, you're allowed to pass it on to another player. This new way of gaining inspiration means you'll be picking up points a lot more often than before, and gives you a chance to get them in fights and during skill checks, as well as just especially good role-playing. D&D is getting a full-blown virtual tabletop. If you're an avid online player, then this one's for you. D&D is going digital. Not entirely, don't worry, but they are turning their efforts to online players, looking at ways to make their experience of the game even better. Rather than players cobbling together, their words, a session through various apps and tools across the web, D&D will now have one single platform to fully run an online campaign. A full digital play space is in early development right now and the final product will have full 3D maps to explore, a system to design miniatures and bring them into the game, and of course, dice to roll. It's using the powerful Unreal Engine, mostly seen in your favourite pretty video games, which means the maps should hopefully look pretty amazing and run smoothly despite being more complex. Wizards are creating pre-built environments to play in, but they also provide elements from those for you to craft into your own creations. It's described as taking care of lazy DMs, so you can either jump into those ready-built maps or design your own. We haven't got any details on how many there will be yet or when this is slated to launch, but it certainly sounds like an exciting feature for those of us who love our online groups but miss playing in person. New take on character backgrounds. All right, strap in. This is where we're getting into some seriously juicy changes. 
character backgrounds as we know them are going to look very different in one D&D. Wizards have taken them apart, examined and rebuilt them with the goal of backgrounds having a larger role in the game. They're set to properly represent a character's life before they take to adventure, and therefore have mechanical advantages to reflect that. Instead of picking from a range of pre-made backgrounds, 1D&D players are encouraged to build their own. This includes the plus one and two to ability scores, any proficiencies in skills and tools, any languages you know, equipment you have, and the new addition of a first level feat. That's right, feats now have levels and you'll get them from the very start. It means that they get more powerful as you do, like a class feature or spell. So even at 20th level, they'll feel useful and relevant to your character. However, don't panic if building your own background sounds like a lot of extra work for a new player. There are example backgrounds still included to use or build from. So let's break down a bit of an example background to see what this might all look like. An acolyte would now have the magic initiative feat at first level, which will be updated from the 5e PHB, where they get to choose spells from one of the three new spell lists, arcane, divine, and primal. Yes, that's a whole nother new feature. There are new spell lists. Rather than being split into class lists like cleric or wizard spells, they will be split into three shared lists by type of magic, such as divine. There are also new feats and revised ones to make these new backgrounds more flexible for whatever character you want to play. For example, the healer. Now, rather than needing a specific healing ability such as a spell in 5e, anyone can use it with battle medic abilities and a healing reroll feature that allows ones to be rerolled. This means someone could have been a healer in their background, but not need to pick a class that provides healing spells to make the character have that helpful ability that they want. Another new feat is the musician. It gives proficiency with multiple instruments and an inspiring song feature, which gives inspiration to other allies who hear it. Wizards have said it will complement bards rather than conflict with their abilities, and I guess it's a chance for a character to have a musical talent and not make it their entire personality. There's a new race! There's a new D&D &D race. I mean, it wouldn't be a new D&D &D book without a new race, and one D&D &D will deliver. The Ardling are described as the upper plane cousins of Tieflings and Azamar. However, rather than being some kind of mix between the two, they are very much their own thing, described as celestial animal people. There are three legacy options to pick from too, uh, exalted, heavenly, and idyllic. Each one is associated with the different planes and provides different innate magical abilities. But you may be wondering what exactly a celestial animal person is. Wizards describes them as having animal heads, which will be partly determined by the legacy you choose. From bears and dogs to eagles. It sounds like if you've been waiting for a certain race inspired by an animal, other than the likes of Tortle or Tabaxi or whatever, this is your chance to become them. The tiefling you know and love will also be getting an update in 1D&D. With the Infernal carrying over to the new edition, as well as an official Abyssal and New Chthonic line, which will cover the rest of the lower planes. Although we're not entirely sure what that will entail as of yet. Orcs in PHB. People who like playing Orcs, your time has come. They are officially joining the Player's Handbook with the new edition. The designers at Wizards have rightfully pointed out that it's high time the Orcs were graduated to the Player's Handbook. With previous editions, including 5e, only allowing brand new players with the basic book to play as a half-orc. This comes with a general look toward freeing D&D's character creation system from its slightly clunky and problematic background. Orcs in modern times have become a staple as player characters and media that's inspired by or revolves around D&D, far flung from the generic bad guys they were posed as before the turn of the century. It makes sense that wizards are getting with the times and nailing their colours to the mast by shoving them right in the beginner set of rulebooks for players to see. Not to mention that... Races are now more flexible in general. 
If you've bought Tasha's Cauldron of Everything and have kept up with D&D news in general, this will come as no surprise. But the races no longer determine your ability score bonuses as they did in the 5e Player's Handbook. The Tasha's ruling of gaining a base plus 2 or 2 plus 1s to put into whatever scores you wanted are being absorbed into the one d d core ruling. That will now be standard practice and mean you can be much more flexible with who your character is rather than automatically being dexterous as a halfling or whatever it is. Instead, you can be strong, charismatic, whatever feels right for who you're playing. Another exciting new feature is your size. In 5e, your race determines what size you are. Most are medium creatures, with some such as gnomes or fairies being small. Now, certain races can pick between small or medium sizes as they wish, thanks to Monsters of the Multiverse. And it seems like that update will become standard practice for certain races in 1 D&D. So get ready for my small tiefling character coming 2024. New version 2024. So this is probably the biggest takeaway from everything announced about D&D's brand new look, which is that you'll be able to get your hands on the new version of all the core rulebooks in 2024. Or at least that's the plan anyway. Newly revised editions of the Dungeon Master's Guide, Player's Handbook and Monster Manual all referred to as the game you know, but as a reflection of where the game is presently. Who knows what the final product will look like, or whether or not the shape of D&D's business model as it will be will bear any resemblance to how it's currently set up. What is quite exciting is that getting your hands on the new state of the game can happen a lot sooner than you might think. You can try the new rule set right now! If you want to get your hands on the very, very early access test version of 1 D&D, or 5.5, or whatever the hell we want to call it now, then as of Thursday afternoon, you should be able to do just that through D&D's playtesting platform, Unearthed Arcana. For quite some time, up until the planned release in 2024, there should be a new chunk of playtest content available, quote, roughly monthly, at least until the end of 2023. If previous Unearthed Arcana releases are anything to go by, then expect the content in these regular drops to be pretty broken. But for those that want to have a say in how this new edition of D&D is shaped, there should be ample opportunity to give feedback to the developers via questionnaires. How are you feeling about this enormous new content drop? Are you excited? Concerned? Let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, then please do hit subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified whenever Dicebreaker puts a new video live. That's us! We're your one-stop shop for everything tabletop related from huge releases like D&D to tiny and cool little board games that you might never have heard of, both here on YouTube and on our website at dicebreaker.com. If you want to support the channel even more, click the join button below to get more information on becoming a member of Dicebreaker Plus. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one, but until then, have a lovely day.